Hi, uh, welcome to the lab one of uh, EC573 Advanced Embedded Logic Design. In case you are using the advanced version of Vivado, so say Vivado 2021.1 or 2, then I'll quickly discuss uh, how to execute our lab one, which has been discussed in detail in the previous lab videos. So the process in the Vivado is almost same. Uh, you create project, okay? So make sure that you select the address, make sure that there is no space. So uh, here, what I'll do is that I'll, I have already created the folder for the ALD22 and then I'll use the lab one demo. Okay, so this is on the Ubuntu. So uh, the, the, but the, there is no change in the Vivado as such. So then click uh, same settings again here, make sure you have the board files installed. So I'll use the uh, Z board. So I'll be using the digital, the Digilent uh, Z board. Then click next, finish. Then uh, the process is same, uh, create block design. Add the zinc IP. Run lock automation with the fix uh, default settings. Then you can uh, remove the things which you don't want. For example, from the here, I'll remove the clock reset. Then I'll remove the GP port. Then, uh, yeah, so peripherals, I need to get rid of many peripherals, flash, ethernet, USB, SD card. I'll keep the UART because I want to use that. Then the peripherals here, it's same. Yeah, I can remove the timer as well clock, uh, I can remove the PL clock because I'm not going to use the PL in this lab. And the rest is same, so click OK. So you get this one, then validate your design, no issue. Go to source tab, go to your design, right click, generate output products. OK, so after you generate the output product, click on OK. So then you need to generate the HDL wrapper before you do the export. Okay, so after you do the HDL wrapper, your Vivado uh, process is completed. And then you need to uh, go to the, uh, the, you need to export your files. So you go to the export export hardware. Okay, there is no top module is designed. So let's figure it out what is the issue. So somehow that export, uh, uh, the create HTL wrapper was not successful. So I just recreated it. So now you can see that this module is a top model. In case it is not top model, uh, there will be option here set as top. You can make that model as a top model. So when you do the export, the Vivado tool should know which is the main project. So that's why it should know which is the top model. Then once this is done, click on file, then click on export hardware. And the same process uh, here, we are not including the bitstream because we are not using the PL. So pre-synthesis so that it is useful for the software tools. Click OK. Uh, you can keep the uh, folder as same as your project folder so that uh, everything will be in the same project folder. Uh, click next and finish. Okay, so after the export is done, in the previous video, Vivado, you have the option of launch SDK, but here now you need to go to the uh, tools and go to the launch YTS IDE. Okay, so that is the slide change. So click on that, so your YTS IDE will be launched. Again, once the uh, ID is launched, make sure that the workspace is same as your uh, project where you are doing the uh, 
your existing uh, project. So you can see that I am doing the lab ALD22 lab one demo. And in the lab one demo, here the SDK will be created. So I'm just using that as my workspace. So make sure that uh, you take care of this. Then launch. Okay, after you do the launch, you can see that the project is not automatically created in the whitelist. You need to create the, uh, the auto, you need to create a project from the start uh, window itself. So click on create project, uh, click on next. So here you need to provide the platform which you have created in your previous, in your viewer. So click on browse, uh, then go to your folder. So I think it is in the documents. ALD lab one demo, then you can see that this XSA file, which I need to upload here. So here we are not going to use generate the boot components when suppose that you want to copy all the boot files in the SD card, then you need to generate the boot components and the FSBL and all so that we'll discuss during the theory, but right now we don't need to generate this. So click on next and then create an application project. So let's say lab one demo and part one. Okay, so we are going to use the Cortex uh, uh, core zero. That is same as the previous one. Click on next. So you can see that standalone or uh, Artos option is there, but we'll use standalone. It's a 32 bit Cortex A zero. Click on next. Again, we'll use the hello world and finish. Okay, so uh, the window is slightly different than the SDK in the 2019.1, but overall the process is same. Okay, so now you go to the source window, you will get this hello world.c. Again, we are going to modify this. Let's uh, implement our uh, the FFT example, which we dis discussed in the previous one. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy my FFT code here. So, let's uh, I'm pasting the FFT code here, which is the same code as the previous one. And then let's save it. Let's find out if there are any errors, any issue. So no issue, okay? Because it's the code we have already tested. Now, uh, there are a few things. Uh, again, if you have your physical hardware, then you don't need to worry. You can directly run your code. But since I don't have the physical hardware, I need to do the same process. I need to connect to the hardware, remote hardware. Again, in the uh, here, we need to just go to this option here and the, go to the target connection, okay? In the target connection, you can see that the, you have the hardware server, so you need to click on new one. So here, remote board, hardware server, the host address, I just need to copy that one. Uh, it is 192, 168. So again, this will, you will get it over the email. So this is my hardware server. I'll keep it as a default one. Okay, so then I'll test the connection. Oh, good, connection is successful. That's fine. Okay, so that means I have connected to the, my remote board. Now I need to configure my, I need to configure my remote hardware. Okay, so the process is same. Uh, you click on, uh, right click on your project. Then, uh, okay, the first thing is that in the SDK, the project is automatically built. But in the Vivado, you, you need to manually build the project. Okay, so that is the, again, uh, different compared to the SDK. So you can see that we have completed the build process. And then now, the then you go to the debug edge, then launch on hardware, but we'll go to the debug configuration. We'll see everything is fine. Uh, I'll just delete this here. Okay, so that you can go to the, click on this one. Okay, standalone project, remote board, uh, lab one demo, so everything is fine. Application on Cortex A0, the ELF file is same. Uh, target setup is fine. You are resetting the board in the beginning. So everything looks fine. So then click on debug. 
there is some issue, but uh, this is fine. You can click on it, okay, because of some version issue, but that is fine. Okay, so it looks like the code is working fine on the hardware. So what we need to do is that now we need to uh, uh, open our terminal so that we can see the corresponding window. Okay, so here I'll type the ZTAC terminal. So I get the ZTAC terminal here. So this is fine. And then uh, let's uh, run the code till this point. And the same issue. And why the same issue has happened? Because we forgot to change the board support package. So then the same thing we need to do. We need to stop it. Okay. Then go to the design tab. Now we need to find the where is the board support package. So now here you can see that the, your board support package will be somewhere. Uh, okay. Go to the main project here in the project one navigate to the bsp in the bsp modify the bsp settings in the bsp setting go to the standalone and then change it to the core site okay so then click on okay and make sure that you regenerate the project uh, build rebuild the project so build the project Okay, so the build is finished. That's a good thing. Then click on the debug, debug configuration, debug configuration, then here, um, debugger settings are fine. Your application, everything is fine. Okay, that's good. Debug. So, say tag terminal. Okay, so till now everything looks fine. So, I'll just run it till the we print the FFT input on the screen. Okay, good. So you can see that the FFT input is printed and then uh, we can just run the code so that your FFT outputs are also printed. So this is the small minor difference between the 2019.1 and 2021.2. Again, the, you can do the debugging in the same fashion as you did in the uh, 2019.1.